Hello, everyone. Welcome to Zobrio Un University's webinar on MIP payments, voids, and corrections. Today, we have Alisa Irvin, a senior, senior application consultant here at Zobrio, to lead the webinar. If you have any questions, please leave them in the chat, which is located at the bottom of your screen, and we will go over the questions at the end. Thank you, and I will now hand over the hosting to Elisa. Good afternoon, everybody. Today, we are going to have a very brief session to cover what can be a very long topic, which is MIP payment voids and corrections. Uh, I'm going to start out <clears throat> with uh, just a basic agenda, some of the items that I'll be going over today the different situations you may have when voiding a payment. You may want to void a check and reissue for whatever reason, the date may have been incorrect, the amount may need to be adjusted, and or void the check and remove the invoice. <clears throat> Some of the things we'll talk about are the GL ramifications, that, and the big one, notice all capital letters there, date, right? Because dates can affect the posting period. Um, and then the last one, and this is something that comes up every once in a while, AP checks that did not print correctly. If you accidentally click yes, when you see the question, did all checks print correctly, how you can address that um, and get those invoices active to pay again. So those are the topics we're going to cover over the next 15 minutes. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to start with void the check and reissue. So in, in MIB, <clears throat> There is a lovely tool up here under activities and check writing. So <clears throat> I'm in my MIT. I've got my menus over here on the left, but I like to use this one up here at the top because I think it's the most straightforward. Activities, check writing, and you're going to see void checks, vouchers, and invoices. <clears throat> you want to start a session. Notice the uh, session ID is automatically coming up as VCK. It's set up in my system to do that. Just a little note. <clears throat> you can put in the um, description. And the date. This is important. So I'm going to sort of jump to item number three. Use the original effective date or a new effective date. If you're voiding a check, <clears throat> if you're resolving an issue that's just happened in, in the current month, you're probably safe using the original effective date. You might even be safe using the original effective date if it was in a prior month and you still haven't closed the period, right? But as with anything in an MIP, you really wanna watch these dates. Today I'm gonna use, use the original effective date. I'm going to start my session. Once I start the session, a whole list of basically <clears throat> outstanding checks is going to pop up on my screen. You can use your filters if you know the specific vendor, if you know the session ID, the document number, and that's actually what I'm using today. I actually created two this morning very specifically for this session this afternoon. And I've got 001 and 002, ABC and Rapid. I'm actually going to take this ABC because notice over here, it's multiple invoices. So I actually put in two invoices that were cut from, that were put on the same check. I'm gonna just select this one over here like this. <clears throat> when I come across, the other thing you're going to see is this little box right here, this column, reverse invoice. So going back to our lovely agenda and slide here, void the check and reissue, void the check and remove the invoice. So let's talk about void the check and remove the invoice. This can happen, happens to all of us. I've been there, I've done the AP, and I've put the invoice in twice, right? I put in two invoices, it got paid last month and it got paid this month, I need to void. It, it was incorrectly 
produced. So not only do I want to avoid the check I cut, I want to avoid the invoice that I that is a duplicate in my system. It's my favorite example. Um, <clears throat> in MIT, when I select that I want to avoid this check, I can also select to reverse the invoice. Okay, my invoices were posted, so that means I need to reverse them out. And remember what I selected as my session date, because notice here, I'm not seeing, I've got <clears throat> my date here, but I'm not seeing the session date. Now I picked today, so it's for me, this one's gonna come out, it's gonna go in, it's gonna come out on the same day. So it's a net change of zero. But this is why that date on that very first session screen is so important, okay? I'm actually going to reverse these invoices in addition to avoiding the check, maybe, if it will let me. Let's see what happens here. Well, let's see what happens here. Let's click OK. I wonder if, hang on. Hang in there with me. There it is. So. The system did exactly what I wanted it to do. <clears throat> this multiple invoices turns off my reverse button. So if you guys are taking notes, write that down. It's actually an excellent practice, practice <clears throat> um, and something you wanna be aware of for this tool. Notice down here, if I come to my other example that I created for today, it's a single invoice and I can select the box. All right. But for multiple invoices, we're actually going to continue with that. We're going to avoid. I'm just going to click OK. It's going to tell me that it was successful and to click finish. It's really that straightforward. Uh, <clears throat> The uh, if I come back here now and I use the bank reconciliation and I did checks and vouchers, outstanding checks. Uh, let me look at my filters on that. Outstanding. I'm actually going to put a date on here just so. Uh, no, I want. There it is. Sorry. There we go. Just give you a uh, plainer example. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Actually, should be here. There it is. It's still sitting there as outstanding. See that? Oh, close our report. Post my transaction. There it is. I didn't post it. So when you void the check, you go through the process, you still have to come back and post your transaction. Now I can go on my report. Still on there, but the check amount is zero. Okay. So that's very, that's avoiding accept. <clears throat> if I come back and I let's close this. We'll close that. If I come back and I select invoices to pay, yeah, we'll leave that. So you guys don't know this. But these are the two invoices that made up that uh, 
$294 check. And the reason is, is that the invoices were for $102, but notice over here in the discount column, we had a $6 discount on the invoices. So when I voided the check, <clears throat> it didn't clear out the invoices that left them in here <clears throat> so that I could come back and reissue a check if I wanted to. If I want to remove these invoices, that is another step because there were two on a single check. <clears throat> I'm going to come back and I'm actually going to do this again. At this time, I'm going to void the check. I'm still going to use the original effective date. I believe that was June 5th for this particular check that I'm going to select. It's, I always think it's a good idea. Just a heads up, it's kind of a personal preference. But I will write down the information of the check and the document that I want to void. That way I just have it on hand. These I've been working with this morning, so they're pretty fresh in my memory. But oftentimes when you're avoiding a check, it's something you did last week, or you did it two days ago, or you did it a month ago, or you issued the check six months ago and it never cleared, right? So, or it, it was never deposited. So in that case, it's always good to go track down the transaction, write down the date. Um, sometimes I write down the amount. I definitely try and capture that document ID. All right, here's my second one. 002, this is Rapid is the vendor. I thought it was June 5th. There's my number. So instead of reversing on 627, it's gonna reverse on this effective data. It's gonna void out on 65. And in this case, I'm actually going to reverse the invoice. It's done. I'm just going to post my transactions. Now, ding, ding, ding. Did anybody notice? I now have two sessions to post. I have the session that's going to void the check, and I have the session that's going to reverse the invoice. So the system created both of them. It also automatically checks both of them for me. So it knows they're connected. And that's what that error message was that popped up on the screen. <clears throat> so I'm gonna post these. Ta -da. Now, if I come back here to accounts payable and I select invoices to pay, that ABC invoice is there. The rapid invoice is gone. It removed it. Okay. So these are, can be very helpful tools for voiding checks and reversing invoices. There is a third scenario here <clears throat> that we want to talk about. <clears throat> So we talked about date, geo ramifications, that for me connects very strongly to the date in your reporting. The other piece of that is, you know, when we voided that one check, those two invoices are still in there to reissue. If you wanna go through and go through the process of removing those invoices, as I said, there's additional steps. <clears throat> okay, the last one. AP checks did not print correctly. So I had this happen to a client actually just about six, seven weeks ago. She was in the middle of her check run and they had a power surge. And the software, the checks didn't print, but it had gone through, it's like it sent the file, but it didn't get all the way printed and she had already clicked yes to did all the checks print correctly okay well clearly they didn't something happened in the process the other thing that can happen printer gets jammed but you were 
have the cart ahead of the horse. I've done it. Um, and you click the button. <clears throat> In MIT, if you clicked yes, and this is where I want you guys to stop yourselves every time you click what? Yes. But you have not posted the session. You can delete the session and it will send those invoices back to have checks cut. So it makes them active again. Um, and to do that, I'm actually going to cancel this process here. We come up here to transactions, account table, edit, pay, selected AP invoices. If you have a session, you will be able to edit it here. And it will make those um, invoices ready to be paid. Now, I don't have anything in here because I posted everything. But the trick to that is, <laughs> is that you haven't posted yet. You also, most likely, will want to go and edit your um, document number because the system thinks that you issued all of those checks. You said yes. So if you issued 100 checks, it's saying 31 100 to 31 200 or to 3200, those documents have been used. They've been assigned. Well, that's not true, right? The system didn't function the way it was supposed to. You voided the session. You just want to make sure that the new document number to follow the last used number, and you can go and set it back to the correct document number in your setup. Uh, <clears throat> so those are, this situation right here, the deleting session, that one has actually come through on the MIT support line a couple of times. Um, so I think it's a, a good one to just have in your notebook, have in the back of your mind. Um, it's happened to just about, well, I don't want to say it's happened to everybody, but I'm pretty sure most AP clerks have come across a time when the check printing didn't go the way that we thought it would, and we're just in the habit of clicking that button. Yes. And this does give you a way out of that. Okay. So, kind of coming back here to our, oops, sorry guys, <clears throat> to our to-do list, <clears throat> void the check and reissue, void the check and remove the invoice, and did you, did AP check, did not print correctly? So the last one is, we did talk about void check and reissue, but we have a few minutes. Um, so what I'd like to do is, before we move on to the question and answer part of this session, is I'm going to pay this ABC invoice. This button, this box right here, right? <clears throat> this is the one where we have that habit of just clicking the yes button, which is fine for most situations. Okay. <clears throat> I'm actually going to, there we go.
Okay. Why oh. Now you guys see why I'm so there we go. There it is. So in this scenario, because I only paid the one invoice, if I come up here to transactions, and I'm sorry, activities, void check vouchers and invoices, There it is, 003. I have my box available. Again, it's going to tell me I need them both clicked. And the invoice will now be removed. Okay, so I've kind of flown through the screen. I've flown through a lot of steps. Um, we have about 10 minutes left in the session. Um, Colleen, do you want to open up for questions? And Yes, I can do that. Does anyone have any questions? You can just put it in the chat if you do. Or anything that you'd like uh, like me to go over again? Okay, well, it seems like no one has any questions. Uh, so thank you guys for joining us. A recording of this webinar will be available shortly. Thank you.